So today we have what's turning out to be a global phenomena we're going to talk about in terms of artificial intelligence and how it's affecting everybody's lives now and what you know things we might consider how it'll affect us later but more particularly you know in music with listening to music and producing music and stuff like that it's mm -hmm. it's already so heavily integrated in everything we do like like just for example I mean, just think about just like, you guys watching us here on the screen <clears throat> We got AI going on in the background right now. Right now, it's going on. Wow. We, we don't see it happening. It just <laughs> happens. You know? If you're watching this video, <clears throat> AI might have driven you into clicking on this video. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our, our video editing guru here uses AI throughout the production of it. Mm -hmm. We have AI upsampling tools we can use. Some of our past videos are show up at 8K. On YouTube, and mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you know what the program was that we used that for? That? Uh, it's uh, Topaz Labs AI. Topaz Labs. Yeah. So we uh, the video basically uploads, I guess, to Topaz, and it spends the whole freaking day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on how long the video is, but yeah. it feels like the day. It's an extra day added on the production, and then turns 4K into 8K. I guess it probably turn 1080 into 8 if you want. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, does all kinds of things, denoise and all that. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's things like this that are going on in the background all the time, and uh, you know, it seems like for the most part, it's improving, it's improving the quality of things. It should be making things better, ideally, faster, faster more efficient. Is a big one. Yeah, um, customization. It's very, very quick at seeing. Well, you've done these three things, so you probably want this thing, and we know. We already know that you're this age and and demographic. So those people who looked at those three things want that. So. Well, that's assuming you're online, but that's true. Right. Yeah. If you have an online presence, AI probably already knows everything about you. Yeah. Now, there isn't a consciousness out there. No. These essentially are just programs that are very clever and well, very good at doing these things. Well, I guess Google could be considered somewhat of a consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the whole, all of Google? Yeah, yeah it's collect collectively. But yeah. yeah, these are it's these are softwares r that are doing a specific type of programming um, that can think through steps and come up with the best percentage chances of having the correct result. So, but it can do it 14 million times at once as opposed right. to... You thinking through everything one at a time, yeah, just right. sitting there working on one thing. Yeah, and really, it's become big a big deal, and everyone's paying more attention to it because of the language models. So the chatting software and everything, all of a sudden, it's been huge because you can chat with something that sounds like a person. Yeah, that's crazy. When I first so, saw that happening, I'm like, well, that's crazy. You know, nowadays, they're using, using AI just to answer telephones at companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you literally can have a conversation with this thing. And almost not even know. Yeah, you know. I yeah. mean, unless you know what you're looking for. But, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it's it's coming up really rapidly um, in terms of just taking over, uh, I don't know what you'd call, what used to be tasks that mm -hmm. people had to accomplish manually. Simple or complicated, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I like I, I use chat modeling here at work. Um, many of our customers, viewers, fans uh, are international. You know, we, we are not just an American company in, in sales and, uh, and customer base. So I get a lot of emails and, and digital communications from people from all over the world. And um, if I think from reading that um, English might not be your first language, I'm likely going to put that through a chat model to produce a result that will be easier for you to translate in whatever your native language is. Um, it's excellent at it. It just takes a few seconds. And then also the opposite direction. I'll get information in. We just had something that came in in uh, Chinese. And um, the translation that Facebook gave us was terrible. It usually um, is. And we put it through a chat model very quickly. It was be, instantly became useful and readable. So, um, so, yeah, even just bridging the gap between languages. Um, is something that's hugely valuable to me, at least. So uh, something right now uh, that everyone's probably using is the Daily Discover or automatic playlists or something. However right. It is pretty great because, like, I, I know a lot of people have this problem, especially at shows, and I do as well. We sit down at the computer. All right, I can listen to anything, right? You have pretty much anything, and you're like, 
you go blank. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. well, I could play anything, yeah. and then you don't know it's what like you want to play. It's too much. It's like, I just want something that just play something. Yeah, what I've learned to do is I have like three songs in my head that's about the most I could seem to remember in situations <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, very limited. And I'll go to one of them depending on what I'm listening to. Okay, yeah. I'll put this in. But yeah, you, you actually got to, you actually have to think about it or be prepared to sit down and think, I can do anything I want. Yeah. What do I want to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Too much choice. Yeah, way too much. Yeah. So, where, yeah. Where, where, where I guess the problem is, you see what, you know what the problem is there though? I think about it. I mean, we're all getting used to streaming and so on, and it's feeding us the songs. We're not even choosing them anymore. Yeah. We're not. Consciously, you forget yeah. that something AI or something is picking the songs for us. Yeah. It can be tough because it's also, uh, it's curating our tastes for us. True. Um, so you have to be careful. Like I, In general, almost every day, I think I listen to my title daily discover list from start to finish. Hmm. That one's pretty good. Almost always is giving me new new music. I like songs, title too like for choosing songs. So it's giving me new stuff. But the YouTube <clears throat> algorithm is severely self serving. <laughs> it's like it might give me the first song is new, mm -hmm. and then the next twelve are songs that I've listened to fifty times. And I'm yeah. like, I, you're the one who gave it to me the last fifty times. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess they're not all created equal. Right. So they'll all get better, but yeah, yeah at different rates. So yeah, I'm not even sure which ones are using AI yeah. and which ones aren't. Like for all I know, well, they don't normally say. Yeah. It's just like. Could just Here's be the songs. old algorithm forever, or you know, yeah. or it's the next Pandora. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, let's let's you know, it, think about. I guess everyone should just consider the fact that this is going on around you continuously, ongoing basis. Just about everything you do, I don't. It doesn't care. Audio, video. You're looking at a. You're watching a, a YouTube video. Uh, you're listening to music. The music could have been generated using AI or you know, artificial <laughs> intelligence. Um, again, you know. The way a car is designed, something you purchase, the curves on the car were probably generated using AI. Um, you know, it's 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 in some respects it's cool and it's scary at the same time. But go, let's think about going forward, like in our in our even in our niche, like you know, we're we're already inundated with it. So like you know, where is it going to take us? Like, what's it going to do to us? Like, how's it going to change? You know, are we going to first of all are we all agreeing all to accept our fate? Well, you kind of <laughs> don't really have a choice. Well, <laughs> I, I've already accepted my AI overlords. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Every time you ask Google or Siri something, make sure you say thank you. No. <laughs> thank makes you, you feel good too. Oh. Yeah. But one day when they when they win. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> when I don't know. Not if when. They'll remember who was polite. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember you. I remember twenty years ago, you were nice to me. <laughs> you get to live. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's true. But it would only know that if you typed it in somewhere or yeah. You know, it had the ability to absorb that information. Like, you think about it, AI could be fooled. Right? It could be twisted. It could be, sure. it could, because it's absorbing only what it sees on basically the web or the internet, um, you know, I, or things that are somehow published and placed there. I mean, you know, there are there would be ways to skew the results, so to speak. Well, once you accept AI as a, as a thing that exists and that you're interacting with it, um, you'll do what you, you do that with people right now, people that you interact with, you, you custom tailor your responses to that person. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want them to see yourself a certain way, or you want them to get, get something from them. Um, but once you look at AI that way, you will absolutely treat it that way. It's a, it's a, right. It's a tool for sure, but mm -hmm. and you need results from it. It's so. somewhat like a child. Um, you know, in a lot of respects, when you think about it, and uh, and an adult at the same time. Yeah, that's the scary part. It's like a, a, a <laughs> child with unlimited knowledge. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, know? right. And, and it's applying that knowledge on a well. You'd hope an equal footing, equal <laughs> level, but you don't right. really know. Uh, you don't really know. Um, I mean, look at like um, you know, they're 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 still uh, Tesla's still trying to really get the self driving thing going on their cars, right? And um, that's just an example of, you know, and they're building what the largest AI computer ever made. They already built it. It's already built. It's yeah. up and running. Yeah. And like the first hour it was on it, the well, first few hours, what what happened? Right? What did it do? Like where, where did it stand? They just turned it on like, like a 530 in the morning, right? And then what, by eight or nine, it was already, it already exceeded every other AI computer yeah. or something yeah. like that? Yeah. I mean, what the hell? Well, that's how that works. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, the current limitations are in, uh, in processing power for sure. The silicon production that that's there's a global limit on that, and the all the platforms that are using that technology have access in general to the same pool of 
processing power. Right. So whoever has money and can create more processing power is going to get better AI. Um, otherwise, you're just stuck with what the world's stuck with. So. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it's hard to just be like, all right, we need more chips. It's like <laughs> it, it takes years. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think te I think Tesla building that computer tapped out. Um, yeah, Nvidia. Know. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. yeah. What, like, what, how many are in there? I, I don't even know. Hundred thousand GPUs. Hundred thousand something yeah. like that. Nvidia yeah. um, boards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. At some point, we may switch to the point where power is the limiting concern. They say it is. Yeah. But really, it's not. I mean, they're not overdrawing grids or something like yeah. that, or shutting down yeah. towns to run AI. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the. At some point, if we can produce processing power, it'll be we don't have enough power on the planet to run these AI. Well, and, these, <laughs> and of course, in terms of processing, that stuff just keeps getting more and more efficient anyway. So, as yep. norm, you know, every three years or whatever, yeah, or whatever, it's 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 we double every year. Yeah. yeah. So this this has never been a limitation since it's, since the whole thing began. The difference is though, we power. never we never been building stuff at this scale either. <laughs> you know. Right. So. Well, one thing for sure, we have a lot of land. <laughs> well, space isn't the problem, yeah. You know, and if we if someone has to build a, a nuclear power plant to run one of these bad boys, and so be it. You know, that's that's the expensive. I, I think back to the movie um, Forbidden Planet. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. a good good sci fi. If nobody's none of you's ever watched that, you gotta check out for the, the you gotta check out Forbidden Planet with the Krell mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and unlimited power source. The planet had an unlimited power source. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. It, it was the, the means to their end. <laughs> yeah, it took them all out. Yeah, no took, spoilers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it got so powerful that their brain power wiped each other out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the computer did whatever they thought. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it was their subconscious. Yeah, and you're right. Their their, their inner id. Yeah, <laughs> that's another one you don't well know. You, you, no one knows what the hell an id, yeah. id, ID is, id is until you look it up. So an inner id. Maybe that's the ultimate fate. Of humanity, yeah, maybe yeah. running the same we thing. We got to be careful. Keep making the computers smarter and smarter. Yeah. They they do everything we want, and yeah. they have unlimited power. Yeah. Well, the next step is in Dune, where they banned it. Well, yeah, yeah I guess that's go. the other direction. Yeah. Well, when when I was a kid, we when we went to the go uh, the the um, go kart track, you'd have a an engine on the back, of you right, running, and you know, and they put on there what's called a governor, oh. yeah, governor, and it limited. The engine could go faster. You yeah. could go faster. Yeah. But the governor, so everyone basically, you floor the pedal and, and you yeah. all are at the same speed, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it. You don't go till the engine revs out and blows up. There's a governor. And I think, mm. you know, I th there's no governor yet. Well, but there is. Know. So ChatGPT from OpenAI ran into that. Yeah. Um, where, you know, they, I, for as far as I know, they don't publish any, publish any of this information. So I don't know why they're doing it. But their AI model is very strong very powerful, could do things like upload all of the book Moby Dick, and it could paraphrase and restructure the entire book. Jeez. But for some reason, it's limited to what's called context points, about 20,000 context points, which mm. is probably a quarter of what it could do. Mm. So why they're doing that, we don't know. So maybe they have processing power limits. Maybe it becomes unstable at mm -hmm. larger content. Or maybe if every person using it all ran a query at the exact same time, <laughs> Yeah, it was shut down to the power of the United States mm. or something. Or maybe the thing just went on the crude side of publishing, yeah, <laughs> something, and so. it started doing things that yeah. were, you know, considered not acceptable by our standards yeah. so as, we're, as humans. We're, mm. we're already starting to see that with some of these models. Where yeah, I mean, think about it. I mean, if you let a computer go with no limitations, what well, it would be similar to letting the human race go without rules or laws. Yeah, I mean, what would what would stop it from? I mean, there's no feelings well, involved. Yeah. No for, right now, for right now, most AI is reactive. There really isn't anything going on out there that's just coming up with ideas and reaching out to people and doing things. Yeah, it's not um, out on its own living its best life. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it still requires input from us to get going mm -hmm. and, and move along. So um, even the ones that are running behind the scenes, they don't start until you hit enter on your search. Mm -hmm. um, right. And they don't think, hey, I should uh, tell him to go buy some headphones. Well, it right. shoots you a text telling yeah. you to go buy some. <laughs> well, let's say, let's say we're at a point now in the future where that is occurring, and it, it's already it's already run all the human scenarios that were posed to it. So it has a collection of what it thinks a human might like or want for any given question, and it it's looking 
it, it already knows. All right. So it's kind of like it's kind of like a heavily experienced person. Like it's kind of like when you call us and you ask us about system recommendations or something like or any company, right? And you're like, and 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 the cut. You say, well, what do you like to listen to? You know, certain questions, right? But this this AI already knows you because you're on the internet. It knows who you. It already knows what you search for, mm -hmm. and it knows what hundreds of millions of people just like you search for. It's already got the answer before you hit. Before you before you put the question mark at the end of the site. It also knows every product, what everybody's ever said about it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Just aggregate all that. This is what well, you want. Well, when we get those phone calls, it, it, as, a, as a person listening to another person, most of the time it's clear to me that that person's already kind of made a decision. And they just want to be validated mm. <laughs> as yeah, the decision the that they're making. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a pretty subtle read on an audible True. conversation over the phone. Um you know, subtle nuances and inflections in their voice, and right. you know the w one word use versus another. Um, yeah, you wouldn't get that from typing something on a screen, which is yeah. a limit. It is a limitation, actually, when you think about it. Hmm. You know, but maybe maybe it's not. Maybe it's also a hindrance. Well, um, depending on how you look at maybe it, maybe it's like oh, that, would, that AI wouldn't have to deal with. If you were typing, maybe you like hesitated on a key or something. It would see that it would go by keystroke, like your your rhythm that you're typing. <laughs> Watch the words with. that yeah. you typed. Possibly. You're typing it fast, too slow, or, or yeah, yeah, delete yeah, something. Right. So yeah, you could probably make some. Yeah, the screen readers working yeah. full time on yeah. that and just looking. Yeah, well, if you let it, and and if we let it, when we're doing our searching, and we we could allow AI to really drive our tastes and likes and interests. I mean, it's going so, that way. You're, yeah. You already see it's going to happen. It, it's already happened. With the, It's already been, it's, it's advertising has been doing that forever. That's mm -hmm. their goal, right? Like, if you really love sports and all you watch yeah. is ESPN, mm -hmm. you're only going to care about the things that they advertise on there. That's going to, it's going to change your life and the way you look. So, think, aud so. so audio in general, like, I mean, you know, what do you think we got? We should probably consider what we got to look forward to. And we haven't put a lot of thought into this because, quite frankly, it's all theoretical. Um, you know, we, is, we, we all, it seems like all three of us is accept, have accepted, at least for now, the way it's going. <laughs> you know, we're, we're fine to kick back, be lazy, and let AI tell us what to listen to. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and, and allow the music to be potentially, in some respects, a lot of respects, maybe mastered using it. Uh, you know, um, so. But yeah. I guess the, the biggest thing is you could just not, though, still. You True. have the choice to. Yeah, not for now. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I think I think the the ease of using it will take over for at, at all in all facets from the beginning from the music from the original recording straight through to playback. You know, you could just see where like we use you know like just for simple Photoshop tools like you were talking about uh, before the video where you know you just throw something in the chat GDP of graphic. <laughs> I want an American flag behind it, you said, right? Yep. But lo and behold, you have an American flag behind a graphic. <laughs> you know, that would take an experienced person minutes or 10 minutes or whatever to do properly. Yeah, I mean, I, I did it, and I said, ah, oh, well, it needs to be, the flag needs to be recessed back. It needs to be blurred. There needs some dimension and stuff like that. And I kept tweaking it, and I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what? ChatGPT will do this in, in a sentence. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so put up the picture, uh, put an American flag behind this. And it did it exactly the way. I was wanting to do it yeah. um, instantly. So yeah, it's crazy when you think about it. And I mean, with that ease of use, there's no going back. I mean, who would? Why? Why would you? Why would you want to do it the manual method? You know. So I could see this infiltrating every facet of our lives for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and but yeah. you know. We got to keep an eye on it. We don't want it to mess with our music too much, do we? <laughs> yeah, it's well. Escalation of knowledge is good. You, you, these systems need to be automated and reliable enough that we don't have to worry about how how it's running. And so, what we will be doing is focusing on the prompt. What, what how do we get out of it what we need to? Yeah. Um, and not worry about the skills of Photoshop being necessary. Um, so it, it'll shift our knowledge level. Uh, well, I guess I guess that what what's still happening is the fact that you had to acknowledge and accept the photo, the final photo. <laughs> yep. A human has right, to accept right. the final product. It's like, is this what you wanted, or the production? You're like, no, change this. Oh, okay, is this what you wanted? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's kind of cool that at least we still have a say in the matter. Yeah. In, in audio, <laughs> when it comes to music, it'll always be the same thing. If it sounds terrible and no one likes it, then no one's going to listen to it. Right, it doesn't true. really matter who's making it or not. And it should be able to figure it out pretty quickly, actually. Yeah. yeah. I, in fact, if it can, it can tell who's listening to what. 
or even at what point it's they stop listening. Right. Yeah. It's at like, some, oh, you didn't like that part? Yeah. yeah. It's like, right. Erase. Yeah. Delete. At some point in the creative industries, and I'm already seeing this, there's going to be a value to the people who do it manually. Like that's going to become a higher value. Sure. Like this is this was painted manually. They're they're in, yeah. they're injecting their tastes and they're Correct. not their what they think people want to hear or see. Into yeah, them, so. I have seen a few artists that have smaller artists, you know, indie um, musicians who um, have put out videos of this is the pedals we used, this is the mixing boards we used, these mm. are the microphones we used, and they do breakdowns of like their whole recording session yeah. to prove what they're doing manually. And um, I mean, that level of exposure we've never seen before and mm -hmm. I'm seeing more of it. And that's probably because they want to show off. Yes, we did actually do all of this yeah, right. in our garage it's with real. our own equipment. And not only are we musicians, but we're artists. I mean, yeah. this has happened in a lot of industries, but the one that comes to mind is uh, it's like watches. You know, as soon as the digital watch came out, you know, everybody's like, oh, analog wind up watches yeah, dead. Right. But now they're still sought after and popular a because Rolex, Rolex is more expensive than ever because it's just the old way of doing it a Philip <laughs> yeah I mean they're not they're not as accurate right that's not as good as a $10 digital watch right but yeah people yeah. still use them the raw processing power of AI that excites me in audio is definitely <clears throat> increases in our technology um, things like um, some type of AI EQ process um, and offloading that to a cloud source where it's customizing the music to, to how you want to listen to it. Um, it's already, you're already seeing that to some level. I don't know what detail it is, but, um, but yeah, like if you, we're spending a lot of time tweaking our systems to try to get the sound that, yeah, that, right. true. that yeah. we want. And, um, you know, the, the little chips in our decks, it can only do so much. Yeah. They're, yeah. Relatively speaking, relative to AI, there are, they're archaic. Yeah, it's like the it's like the computers <laughs> on the just, Apollo, yeah, <laughs> space mission or yeah, something right. like that. Yeah. Compared to yeah, you still are using computer. switches and uh, it's a, you know mounted to a metal metal front uh, you know uh, panel and yeah. uh, and uh, limited computer limited computing power. Yeah. Proce you know? Processing au digital audio is not that hard. It is ones and zeros that translates into something, and that's why we see so many filters. And everything else, like that's that's relatively it's known technology that's been existed for a while. Well, maybe there would be just, it wouldn't be any like pre-recorded music. Everything would be made up. And knowing you, it would be like, oh, I know what you want to hear, and then it would just make the song for you at that moment. You know, you so see, you're, you're not even searching for anything. You know, well, you know that that's something I never really <clears throat> thought of, but because music, because most of our music is stored digitally, uh, and we're currently using DAX to convert digital to analog. I wonder if AI can take the digital file and convert it for us. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that what if it did? I mean, we, I don't know. <laughs> can it do that? We talked about <laughs> Apple and, and Sony are two that have uh, the scanning of your ear and translates the mm. EQs, the music in some way using whatever it is that they're they Yeah, say we don't know doing. what they're doing. Yeah. But, right. You know, um, they're doing you know, something. That, that is that technology is in, a, in its infancy. Right. And once that's broken into, a, a computer that can think it 14 million times <laughs> at yeah. each step. Yeah, I mean, like, especially like improving spatial audio, making it actually sound, you know, big, converting things to channel to multi channel and like real time, yeah. all that kind of stuff. For you, for you personally, yeah, for right. your ear and your right. brain, my, the way you My guess things. would be that would be a very limited function too for something like an AI program because I think when you look at, when you look at at least all the experience I've had with listening to music, that there's more. It, there's a lot more to it in terms of the of the musical the content of the music versus your your inner ear, you know. I I really do. I mean, you know, I, I think once you figure out the differences in inner ears, you'll find that they're not so different, and you'll find that it, it it'll roll right back to the original recording, the production, what the content that's in the music that would be way more powerful to vary than trying to figure out your, you know. This, you know, and, 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 you know, because, because this is a huge variable from different countries and different peoples and so on. And, but it's really not like in my experience and all the years I've been doing this is found out that listening to certain music on certain systems is highly universal, regardless, regardless of the person. So I think that there's a limitation to what you could do with, um, well, know, yeah, with, with transfer functions and well, stuff yeah, like we that. Are, we're the limitation. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and, and you're also building in experience levels too into that that doesn't translate to a scan of an inner ear. Yeah. You know, maybe when they learn how to scan your brain. <laughs> you know, or better yet, implant experience into mm. you mm. that doesn't exist yet. Matrix if style. AI can teach you rapidly mm. how to listen, now we're talking. So that's now, that's the next level. Combine, yeah, yeah, yeah. combine Neuralink with audio. Or mm. just give you, just figure out what they need to, what you need to listen to to have. Well, at that point, to, you would just bypass. ramp your experience level. You would just bypass listening altogether and it would just be like. Well, not that you're directed. <laughs> you could still use your, your ears, but the point is, is that it, it to, will though. figure out content to feed you and maybe even cues to teach you i mean you know think about it like you know we all had to learn trial and error most of us you know most people most of us don't have someone sitting next to us telling you what to listen for you hear that center image uh you know that that piano should be over there not over there you got your cables mixed up you know all these things you learn by trial and error over time and what to listen to depth, you know, you know, try to get the the the, the, the singer in front, blah blah blah, setting up to get a sound stage, um, you know, these are things that once you hear it, it's difficult to like you say unhear it. Right? Mm -hmm. You can't. A lot of things we do, we find you can't unhear it, mm -hmm. or vice versa. You once once you for better or worse, yeah, <laughs> it goes the other way too. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think there can be AI could if the what I think ultimately what it's going to come up with if it's if it's actually trying to please us in terms of music is going to come up with a way to teach us rapidly, whether it be, you know, so many songs or so many tracks and and with something on a screen to watch while you're, while you're listening. And, you know, within a couple of days, like learning how to play the piano. People used to sit down with a teacher and you, months, years, right? Now you sit down with a screen and it knows, the programs know exactly the keys you should start to learn with. I've never done this before, but mm. what I understand, it's a rapid lesson relative to the old school method. And I think that would be like the most powerful tool would be to bring everyone up to speed as to what they should be hearing. Show them show them that with samples, examples. Give them the, what they could hear. And uh, before you know it, we're all on an, we're all on an even playing field. Uh, you know, and that, now the content that AI comes up with will feed into that. That's yeah. that's to me the future. That's where it's going to have to go because you know I I don't see any mechanical means of improving in terms of playback of music happening anytime soon. Really, you know, we're you know unless unless again we get like you said to a direct connection to the brain. Well, any anything that has mm -hmm. encryption or an algorithm in order to play has a potential to be improved with AI. So when you talk about like sample rates and stuff like that, like the sample rates could be. I don't, well, whether it sounds better or not, but mm -hmm. sam sample rates could go up by a factor of 10 or 100 if, if we start pouring them through an AI mm -hmm. algorithm very quickly live, right? Sure. So like DSD 1 million yeah. <laughs> or something, I don't know. Um, we're pretty close already. It, like it, it, it seems like, oh, well, we're already pretty much bit perfect to the point where we can't hear a difference. Um, but the computer could do better. Sure. It's just not being applied yet. One, one part of it that I am a little concerned about that I'm seeing currently happen right now is uh, review content. Um, I noticed the other day I was trying to compare two amplifiers. And I went to Google and I mm -hmm. said this amplifier versus this one. And Gemini, Google's AI, mm -hmm. immediately popped up a little window mm -hmm. <laughs> with comparing those two amplifiers. Mm -hmm. That was AI created an AI-created review. <laughs> It Sounds went, about right. It went through the whole internet, found reviews, <clears> made <throat> it up. I could not find one review that compared those two amplifiers. Uh, yeah. well, a lot of YouTube videos are sounding like that now, where it's a computer-generated voice talking. Yeah, and, yeah. It's just, and you know it right yeah. away, and it's like, mm, yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, pulls, it pulls the specs. It did pull the specs accurately for both mm. amplifiers. It's well, a good start. But how it generated the rest of it, I have no idea. Mm. I didn't say, like, sound will sound good with my Abyss headphone or something. Right. I was just like, this amp versus this one. And it went right into it. Like, Yeah, Amazon does that now. They like they just aggregate all the, uh, the reviews and then come up with an A. AI generated overall review of what everybody else yeah. said. So that's a little more clear cut because well, it's like it, it's pulling it from their reviews. It, it is, but in my opinion, it does not have enough content to draw from, especially in something yeah. like audio. Yeah, well, sure. So like if there's only, let's say there's 500 reviews on Amazon, mm -hmm. using your example, mm -hmm. 
most of the people who are leaving a review either had a horribly amazing, awesome experience right. or terrible yeah. one direction or the other. Or like right? completely unrelated to the product, shipping problems, right. The damage. people who just bought yeah, it, yeah. didn't have an issue, just went on with their lives, are probably not leaving reviews. Well, it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, with reading books in school and they had those, what do you call those things that are cheat things? Uh, cliff notes? Yeah, okay. yeah. You, obviously, you get the cliff notes version of it to cheat or whatever or, or whatever. So you get a, a gist of the book. But mm-hmm. you'll never understand the real, well, true meaning of the, of the story. Th- that, though, should be it. relatively unbiased towards the content of the book. The content that yeah. the AI mm-hmm. is using to generate these reviews right. is severely polarized, sensationalized is content. It? There's well, yeah, not because it's pulling it from the internet. Yeah, it's not. It's <laughs> yeah. not. The average person's experiences are not documented. I think that the internet are in reviews. <laughs> no. I, I could. I mean, just standing back and looking at the the bigger picture on that, I think also. I think also what's giving you guys that impression is the fact that it's not allow you to introduce your biases into what you're reading. You know, like if if you you would normally like I, the way I at least the way I absorb some reviews of products i'm looking for a new shaver okay which i could have used today and um you know and uh and i'm looking at the reviews and i've done this recently and um again some are negative some are positive and i, and I like to look at a couple of negatives just to see if they got a valid point or not you know because and usually they're most of them are bullshit yeah. you know i didn't like it because it sucks i mean who cares you know but you know but some of them are like um you know are, make good points whatever it might be it's too heavy or that the head keeps falling off mm. or I can't clean it easy. And then you're looking at it from a mechanical smoke going, why would you not be able to clean it? I, do you just not know how to clean a shaver mm. or, you know, but, but bottom line is I, I find myself looking at reviews and saying, well, I'm, I'm biased in the reviews I pick to read because some of them I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking for certain things because I've used a shaver before. Mm. I know how it works. I'm yeah. not new to yeah. this. Yeah. I know what I'm looking for. Therefore my, my tastes are biased already. Yeah. So I'm looking to see if the reviews match up with what I think, I'm looking for. Well, and most with people, a summary, you won't get that. Most no. people who do reviews, though, aren't are only going to be generating the content because they had an edge case scenario, for the most part. Um, it, you know, I hey, I bought this thing. It was fine. I like it. It's okay. That doesn't generate clicks. It doesn't generate revenue. Right, it doesn't sure. generate, like it, things that are sensational tend to, but that's what the AI has access to. So it if if, if that's all you read, you'll just think everything is polarized on and off. When really the world is ninety eight percent gray area in the middle. Totally. So, so yeah, that's a, that's a big concern I have, and and also you know looking at the content, I've actually been if I find a written review, it's easy because you can just select the whole thing and put it into a is this AI generated <laughs> um, <laughs> thing, what? which yeah. is it's, it's not perfect, but you know if it says one hundred percent this was not wait, generated wait. by AI. Are you saying like, AI can call itself out? It can. Yeah. Well, it tries to. <laughs> it tries. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's, it's not a perfect math. Like yeah. I don't think schools should oh, man, be using it. it that's yeah. almost an activity. Like try to f with AI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. give, like you know, give it some stuff. Hey, what do you think? Is this real? <laughs> yeah. I, like uh, you know, I don't know if uh, anyone was a fan of his or not, but that's I've funny. done it with Darko Audio stuff mm-hmm. because his. His is some of his reviews are like 15, 20, 30 paragraphs long or something. Yeah. And I'm like, who? It's, you really sit down and type out this whole thing? The AI, well, at least the AI thinks he did. Yeah. And um, so it well, maybe uh, his brain just thinks like AI. Yeah. And I, or po- yeah, possibly. <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, that I've been using that too. Just well, you, to read, try to you read some of his stuff and some of his stuff. I don't read a lot of his reviews, but you read some of his stuff and some of it does read like a summary. So I guess you could see where you can almost consider that. Thinking that it might be an yeah. AI generated thing. Yeah, I'm not picking on him he, specifically. No, me, yeah. me I do it with I do it with everybody. So, right. you know, some of the head five reviews. But too, I think like, I think that's what yeah. happens when you have limited space, or limited time, yeah. or both. Yeah. You know, and you say, okay, I, I got to say X amount about this product yeah. in in one page. Go. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what AI would be good at, and a, a human with a ton of experience would also be good at that. Yeah. You know, condensing everything into. A few paragraphs. Yeah. Well, I'm also not reading a thousand words well, if I think I, an AI wrote it. Right. Well, that's true. <laughs> so. Agreed. Or nor listening to it either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I see a YouTube video and it's got that monotone to it, it's like this is going to be useless. I don't really need this. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I want to see. I want to see a human talk about things that humans use and on a daily basis. I really do. You know, good or bad. Maybe one day you won't though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's obviously, you know, that'll be, you know, wh- you know what, though? I mean, it kind of reminds me, remember Back to the Future where Marty goes forward and he goes into that coffee shop or whatever the hell, you know, mm-hmm. and the screen comes over to him or whatever, yeah. you know, and, and uh, our old president, uh, what's his name? <laughs> What's the president? Was it Ronald Reagan? It was Reagan. Oh, Reagan, yeah. Reagan comes on, you know, yeah, what do you want to drink yeah. or whatever, you know? <laughs> it's got a little glitch in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a 
little stutter. <laughs> I think probably just done on purpose. Michael Jackson was one of the waiters. So. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. But it's kind of like that scenario. I know you're where it's like, you know, we're going to, if it gets to that point, we're going to all be clamoring for nostalgia at that point because it'd be like, you know. But that's the thing. We could do that now. Yeah, you know? we could. Yeah, <laughs> you know? We already are. <laughs> so. Yeah, been doing it, really. I but mean, we, we passed back to the future day. We didn't get flying cars. Yeah, right. Yeah, that yet. was 2015, so yeah. that was a long time ago already. Well, you know what the problem was? They didn't have a guy like Elon Musk working on it or somebody like him. You know, flying cars. Steve Jobs well, went, well, the, went, went one on. way and he we, did what he did. We already have flying cars. Right. They're called helicopters. Well, yeah. No, that's, yeah. True. <laughs> that's true. There's an issue of sound. does not matter how – if you well, need to fly something, you need to move a lot of air. So until yeah. we beat gravity. Well, and price. I mean, you know, they're not going to be at the same cost yeah. as a Camry. I think so. it's more the logistics of the whole matter of – Well, yeah, there's putting, a lot, yeah. Putting a, a – a, and the average consumer in something that flies <laughs> well, it would have to be automated. You know? well, well, to yeah. be able to fly it from your house to a secondary yeah. location and, and, requires yeah. a lot of air movement. and being safe. It's going to be very loud. Yeah, yeah. And, everyone and would hate it. It's really yeah. the safety factor, you know, and, and, yeah. and the regulations involved. I mean, you think about it, the red tape involved, where you know your typical business model wouldn't apply to that. You, it's kind of like starting an Amazon. You got to have billions of dollars before you even. Someone yeah. gets in the first product. Really, really they just know? have to beat gravity. Mm. That's that's the trick. Well, so that would do it. Yeah. Flying cars are just, yeah. I mean, they're possible. That's the thing. We know we, we can make them right now. Yeah. It's just yep. not practical. The human drone uh, drone that carries yeah. a human is basically what yeah. yeah, we need a new fuel source is what we need. Mm. Well, either it would still be loud. Your neighbors about, would hate you. Yeah. It's all about energy. <laughs> you just everything rah, everywhere <laughs> flying all over. It would be a problem because <laughs> that's the thing. Back to the Future, they had flying cars, but they were quiet. Yeah. Just, so. Well, they resolve that more and more. I mean, when you know where there's a will, there's a way. I mean, you know, you're, you see that now with all kinds of things that blades that generate air motion. The AI will figure well, yeah, out how yeah, to make yeah, it quiet. Yeah, they're right, already right. doing that. Yeah, yeah. I think our jet fighters that they're the, the, the current ones in the newer models are becoming. More and more stealthy as it goes on. I don't think they have. I believe the F thirty five is something like it's, twice as loud as an F eighteen yeah, or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's probably because it's, it's American like, made. Well, not only that, it's, it's not a top priority though. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, that's not. It, you know, I guess. Thing. I guess that it, you know that's part of it though. I didn't think about it, but you know, I, it, you don't think about because we don't design fighter planes yeah. for a living. Oh. But I think some of the bad, the noise is badass. And like, if you ever well, hear one of these things go over, it's freaking intimidating. Yeah, they did it. You know, when they did like, the victory tour uh, during COVID, where they did a B two oh, yeah, yeah. and the two F thirty fives, flew over my house. Yeah, yeah, it was right over my yard. Yeah, it was it cloudy was that day. I couldn't see it. So loud. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, it shook, knocked over picture frames, stuff like that in my mm -hmm. house. Shook my house. I grew yeah. up when I was a kid. I grew up literally a mile from the airport, and I'm talking like we're talking in the in the 60s and 70s when airplanes really made a lot of noise mm -hmm. and they spit out enough soot that you'd have to wipe it off the top of your head when they went over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it would float mm -hmm. in the top of pools, right? But my, my point I'm getting at is that our, our every plane that went over the head shook our house in, yeah. the, in the early 70s, right? And, um, and so I was accustomed to that noise. And in one day, I don't know when it was, I think early 80s, that was like one of the last flights of the Concorde. You know, the Concorde is a supersonic, yeah. went from Europe in four hours right. or whatever. Well, it, for whatever reason, landed in Buffalo International Airport. Which time wasn't called Buffalo. It was, just, it was a small airport. It landed there. We happened to see it. We were nearby the airport when it took off. Loud as hell. <laughs> and again, I grew up with jets shaking our house. And to me, that thing was freaking well, loud. Well, well, <laughs> so I get it. Well, you know, the technology the hasn't improved. They changed the regulations is the thing. The planes are still very loud. I, like, for example, I always know when Air Force One lands in Buffalo <laughs> because they don't have to follow any of those. Mm, they yeah. zip into the airport with no air braking, like, no, no, drop you know, it. no taxing, and they leave the exact same way. Yeah. And that plane is no louder than any other plane. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, they have to, I, I could tell always because it's the loudest airplane that lands. And we have the, we have C-130s and the Galaxies and stuff that, mm. that land at our airport regularly. Yeah. But they have to take a slow approach just like all the rest of the planes mm. and, and that's it. So There's something, I guess, you know, that's that's American muscle right there. It's kind of like the V8 cars and stuff like that where, yeah. you know, we're slowly getting used to, well, you're the younger generation, you're going electric, so you're getting used to. And I've even gotten accustomed to walk, stand, with, this, with the new Cybertruck, I'm starting to learn that there's the technology involved with the new electric vehicles and the torque and the speed is just, you know, I mean, the, it makes a gas engine feel crude to drive in comparison, which is a crazy thing for me to say because a year or two ago I would have 
Told you, there's no fucking way I'm giving up my game, my freaking <laughs> V8. I, my, I love my 392 Wrangler, and I still do, you know. And it gets attention in different ways. I think you, know? you have an older video um, where you talk about the hand of the thing, and I think that the audio part of a car is part of the hand of yeah. it being a good, a powerful thing. Right. You know, you're just used to well, if, the if feel of it. If it's loud, it just you know must be more powerful, must be faster. Type right. Of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it becomes obvious, you know, yeah. I remember some of the, sp- I had, I used to have a, uh, back in the day, I had a sport, a GTR. It was a, one of the first ones in the country. And I mean, it kind of, the Cybertruck kind of reminds me of that because of the attention it gets, but to a much wider audience. Cause now we have, I mean, the Cybertruck's just obvious, <laughs> but the, uh, with the, uh, like something like the, when Nissan came out with the GTR and they had a lot of advertising marketing before, but bottom line is that it's like, I remember one guy came up to me and he says, that thing looks fast standing still. And, you know, you don't think about it, but it's like it, it's it's appearances and sound, things things that the humans pick up on, right, um, for sure, um, intimidate you yeah. in, a, in a certain way. And when AI learns how to capture all that, it'll take over. I mean, <laughs> it's just like, you know, what it'll give us everything we need. It'll have a complete understanding of what we seek as humans when it has that. We're in deep. We're probably in deep shit, but we will completely be appeased too. So it's kind of a scary thought for me as an older guy. It's kind of a scary thought because I'm not sure where that's going. I just don't want it to be self-serving like the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, I want to be generating new content that expands my interests and likes Mm. and doesn't just keep feeding me the same thing over and over again. That should be the goal. Right like there. like the loud car yeah. example. Like, yeah, loud cars are faster, more powerful, whatever. Well, if that's all the AI believes, it's just going to keep giving us loud cars for all time. But the reality is that there is a better way mm. that could feel better and everyone will love. Yeah. Um, but that it'll never cool. know it. So it's going to, it requires humans at the helm so it's far. True. YouTube is very good at keeping you in your own little bubble of what you want to see. I would love a checkbox that said, I like new content Yeah. That in, in YouTube as a drop down. If uh, if Mr. Google is listening, mm. and then have AI generate some of it for you, and just see if you could tell the difference. Oh, yeah. You know, maybe, maybe that's the real key is to have, uh, not to have AI take over, but to continuously have AI and humans challenge each other. <laughs> you know, make it a game. I don't think Hell, we're much of a challenge for a computer, though. No, but it might be. It <laughs> might be if it, if, it, if it never. Yeah, well, it's pretty. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it's 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 never. You know, if it if it if it stays on track to always want to learn. Then that would be a way to do it because in the end, like let's say, like like you know, humans are always learning, right? We're always growing. Well, you hope. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happens when AI gets bored? Like when mm-hmm. it doesn't have anything else to learn, what happens? It isn't learning right now. Really. Yeah. That's the whole point. Like it's <laughs> yeah. it's gen- it's going off of our prompts. Right. It is still reactive. Mm-hmm. There isn't there isn't something out there just trying to create new things. Well, so. I mean, that's what happened with Viger. It's like it learned everything there was to learn, and it didn't know. Need to return to its maker. Yeah, for and new, then it had to evolve into something else. <laughs> and then, then it, uh, then it starts seek. It started seeking more knowledge, didn't it? Like, no, it already learned everything it could. Everything. Well, I thought it did. Yeah. <laughs> it says, is this all I am? <laughs> you know? well, that's true. That's true. So. At that point, life's a bitch. Yeah. Didn't know what to do. <laughs> Didn't well, know anyway, what to do. We really went off topic on this yeah, one. Yeah, like yeah. It's been a while since we went this far off topic. Mm. Uh, so there you have it, everyone. Thanks for listening to uh, our blabber on this one. And, uh, you know, look forward to the future. Take care, guys. <laughs> <laughs>